We are looking at the CSET Mathematics, May 2024, past paper solution. And we are at question one. Now remember, you should make an attempt, a genuine attempt, at answering the questions before you watch me work out the solution, right? So here, number one, one, no, one A, one A. Calculate the value of, you have the square root of 7.1 squared plus 2.9 squared. Give you an answer correct to two significant figures. Now, you are allowed to use a calculator here. It's not paper one. No, don't just use a calculator and get the answer and write it down. You should do. Show your working step by step. You have 7.1 squared. Let us get our calculator. Because we can use um calculator in paper 2. So what you have is 7.1 squared, which is 50.41. So you have 50.41 plus and then 2.9 squared and we will see what we get for that 2.9 squared equal 8.41 so we have 8 Point four one. That is equal to the square root of what? So, what we're going to have here is 50.41 plus 8.41. So, it's 50.41 plus 8.41 giving us 58.82. Now, that's 58.82. Then, we're going to find the square root of 58.82. So, the square root of that equal. Now, it's 7.669.41, and it goes on. But... You're asked to give your answer to two significant figures. Now remember, the number of significant figures is the number of digits that you see as you look from left to right with the first non-zero digit being the first significant figure. That means with 7.669 and so on, you could write as many zeros as you want before the seven. They don't count. You don't need those zeros. All right. What you need is the seven and then any number to the right. So to two significant figures, it is seven point. No, you might you will stop at six, but you will look to the right and see if the number on the right is 5 or greater or less than 5 if it is 5 or greater you're going to add 1 you're going to go back and add 1 to the 6 to make 7 it is indeed the number to the right of the 6 where you stop is actually 6 so you come back here and add 1 to this so it's 7.7 .7. right so it's 7.7 .7. And I have another video showing the reasons why the rule for rounding off is like that. Right? If you haven't seen it, or if you know understanding um, exactly why, you can just put it in the comments. I might be able to find that video and link it or make another one. Now, that's one mark for that. Let's see what's going on. Oh, to two decimal places now. First to two significant figures. Then you're going to 
write it to two decimal places. So we're going to get back our calculator and see exactly what that number was. You have seven point. Now, the number of decimal places is the number of digits to the right of the decimal place. All right? Not to the left now, you describe that it's to the right. So you start counting immediately after you pass the decimal point going from left to right. So you have one, two decimal places. You would you would plan to say it is 7.66, but you must look at the number that follows the last six. It is nine, which is five or greater, so you must add one to the six to make it seven. So it's seven point six seven. Alright? So this number seven point six seven. See that? No, here. Write the qu following quantities in ascending order. So you go from smallest to largest. Now, you have one of them, this one, is in fractions, this is in decimal, and this is in percentage. Now, it's difficult to tell the sizes of numbers when they are in fraction, unless you have a common denominator. It's easier when they are in decimal. But it might be a bit easier on the brain if you put them in the form of percentages, all right? So let's put everything as percentage. Now, we already have 47% here. This 0 0.46 is how many percent? It's 46%. So you know that something 46, 47, 47 is to the right of 46 because it is larger. What about 12 over 25? Where will it go? Well, you want that in terms of a percent. So, just like how you would say a half, when you multiply by a half by 100, you get 50. So, a half is 50 per cent. Per means out of. Cent from the Latin word centrum, 100, all right? So, just like that would be the case, you do the same thing with 12, 25th, 12 out of 25. So, 12 out of 25, we want to see what 12 out of 25 is as percentage, since we have the others in percentage, all right? This is 46%, this is 47%. We want the 12 out of 25 other percent to see exactly where it would fall in this order. Now, if 12 out of 25 times 100, right, to convert this to percent. Now, 25 into 25 one time. How many 25 do you have in the 100? This is 4. And 12 4 is 48 percent. Now, you have this, you have this, but the 12 out of 25 would go the highest to the right. It's 46 percent, 47 percent, 48 percent. Now, you're not going to write it, all of them as percentages in the answer. What you're going to say is the 0 0.46 is the smallest. You just converted them to percentage to see how what they are. But they did not give you these numbers in percentage. They give you a fraction, a decimal, and a percentage. So when you write it down, you write it exactly as you are given. We only converted it to percent to easily see which is larger than which. So here, we have 0 0.46. Not 46%, you know, it's 0 0.46. That's the smallest. In the middle, it's 47%. You are giving it as percentage, all right? So 0.46 is less than 47%. And 
and 47% is even less than 48%. But well, you're not going to write 48%. This is what you're going to write. 12 out of 25, all right? So it's 12 out of 25. All right, so that is what we have. Next time we look at the next part of question one.